We are Venom. Actually, we are Captain Creativity, but today we're gonna to be channeling our inner symbiote to bring you this Venom project. And I know Halloween has already passed, and that's fine, because this is just an awesome project to go through, whether you're a beginner or an advanced user. And I know there's lots of videos out there of these Venom projects, but I find most of them to be really, really fast and not that detailed. Today, we're gonna go through the process of building this step by step so that you can follow along because it's really that easy and there's gonna be no painting or sanding involved. So let's begin right after this. Welcome to the show that sets your mind free. Tech and gadgets, 3D surprise. Welcome back to another episode of Captain Creativity. I am your host, David Merrow, and sitting next to me is Venom from Venom The Last Dance. As I mentioned earlier, this was a really simple project and it was fun and easy to create. And a lot of that is thanks to the designer, Yosh Studios. We downloaded their files and we were just so blown away with the results. And it wasn't the first time we've worked with them. We used them for the Wolverine helmet project, which was a YouTube short, as well as the Pikachu build, the full size Pikachu build. Also super simple to follow and easy to assemble. What's really cool about this file is that they actually have different versions of it. This is the one with the tongue. You don't have to have it with the tongue. There's actually another version that you could take that out and then the mouth closes all the way. So there's two different types of jaw lines that you can replace it out with. What we're building today is the one with the tongue and the movable um, jaw hinge. With that being said, let's go get the files and let's begin. Okay. So to get you going, Yoast Studios provided a 3MF file and that's great because it just lays everything out. It already puts on manual supports on a lot of the pieces, not all the pieces, but a lot of the pieces. So you definitely have to check. For example, the helmet over here doesn't have supports and we have to put those on automatically. You can use Orca Slicer, Prusa Slicer, Bamboo Studio. All of those work great with the 3MF. And on there, you'll find a bunch of different parts on here and I'm gonna show you what they are. There are two types of hinged jaws here. One where the tongue goes in and one without the tongue. The one without the tongue is right over here and the one with the tongue goes over here. And you'll notice that there's a notch for the tongue, which is right over here. And if we turn it upside down, you'll see that there is the opposite end of the notch where this part will glue right into that part. You're gonna have just one type of helmet over here. You can see at the jaw is where the hinges snap into. And here you have your back plate along with cutouts for magnets, which is great. So you could just take those magnets off and get the helmet on and off very easily. You also have the jaw, you have an upper jaw, lower jaw uh, with teeth. So for example, in this project, what I am going to end up doing is I am not going to need this. I don't think I'm going to need this, these little uh, hinge pins. I think you can pin them in on the other side if I'm not mistaken, but we're not going to use them right now. We'll, we'll, we'll take a look at them later and then we're not going to use this. All right. So essentially these are the parts that you're going to need for the project. So let's start slicing them up and uh, we'll see how long it's gonna take and how much it's gonna cost us. So in order to get the jaw going, this one we're gonna want a multicolor print and certainly you can try to just do it in one color and then use acrylic markers, but I really want this to come out really nicely and I'm gonna add another color to here. And so we're gonna end up having two colors. One of them is gonna be for the gums and then one of them is gonna be for the teeth. And so what I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna select my object because the 3MF file does not include the coloring for the parts. So what I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna actually just fill up this entire part over here. So this one for the teeth, you see it, it's being recognized as the gum. So I'm gonna actually increase the smart fill angle and try to get that tooth. Okay, that's exactly what you want. 
So same thing over here, we gotta get the tooth in one. Now these dimples over here, there's really no reason to waste time having them change color. So I'm just gonna make sure that this all ends up becoming pink because there's really no reason for us to change colors here. It would be just a colossal waste of time. Then after this, we're ready to slice and send it to the printer. Okay, so as you can see, I sliced it. It's gonna now run on an A1. It'll take about five hours because it is a multicolor print. These are all the supports over here and I'm just using the manual supports that they provided. And so I'm gonna hit print. And then if you have a bamboo, you're gonna match up your colors. I'm gonna hit send. And even though I know I wrote gray, I know that the bone white is the tooth color. And we know that the Erion matte PLA pottery red is for the gum. Now we just let it do its thing and go and we move on. So when it comes to the top part of the helmet, one thing you should know is that there does not seem to be any manual supports. And I definitely do not believe this is gonna print without any support. So what I did for this particular piece, I actually went ahead and enabled tree supports auto instead of manual. Most of the parts do have manual tree supports painted on for optimized results. But when it came to this piece, I definitely had to go with automatic. And so just keep that in mind that just because you don't have supports there, it doesn't mean that I could print without supports. It just might simply mean that it was not added correctly or saved incorrectly, or just it was something that they overlooked. Just something to keep in mind. All right, so let's go over the filament you're gonna need for this project. A big shout out to 3D Meeks, so 3D Mikes from Instagram. He made a post and he actually got me started with a lot of the different filaments here. I'm gonna make some variation, some changes along the way and I'll explain that shortly. With the tongue, I actually went with a fire engine red made by Eason and it's PLA Plus. I felt the uh, fire engine red was just a little bit darker than standard red. Uh, so that's why I went with that. Anyway, I, moving on, the gums is gonna be a different brand called Irion. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's a matte PLA and it is called Pottery Barn Red. This is an excellent find for gums, just perfect color. When it came to the uh, rest of the helmet, the you know, the black helmet component, I went two different types of filaments to try them out. One is a Sunlu PLA Plus and the other one is an eSun PLA Plus. And I think it depends on what you're trying to go for. I believe that the uh, eSun PLA Plus it, black is gonna give a shinier finish to it where the eSun PLA Plus black will be less of a shine uh, and maybe more of a matte finish to it. But we're gonna put this to the test and really see what's what. When it comes to the eyes, these were just cold white by Eason PLA Plus, okay? But cold white is what you need. That's right over there. And then when it comes to the teeth, we're going with something called a bone white. And that's also by Eason and also PLA Plus. So basically that's about it. I have found that you can get deals on these filaments and typically they end up costing me somewhere between 15 and $18, there's always either a sale or a coupon, whether you're buying direct from the site or you're getting it on Amazon. I found a lot of different deals always going on and you could certainly wait for a major deal to go down to get these, but basically you're gonna need five rolls of filament if you wanna pull off this project. Now granted, you're gonna be able to make a lot of helmets here, but it is going to require you to buy a kilogram of this, a kilogram of that. I don't think any of these companies sell them at less than one kilogram. So it's finished. Oh my God, does this look amazing. The colors were spot on. Oh my God, look at that. Look how good that is. <laughs> That's crazy. And now the manual supports were also fantastic. Just look at that. Look at how nicely it tears away. Yeah, there's some unfinished, but we're not gonna see that when we put it into the mask. So I'm not too worried about that. But wow, does that look fantastic. Just check that out. That is beautiful.
The detail is pretty amazing. Came off the bed pretty, pretty easily. Now let's see how the supports come off. Luckily, the areas that we're removing that come out really the ugliest, which is here and here, are all underneath the tongue and most likely not gonna be visible when the whole thing is assembled. So keep that in mind when you're, you're removing this. I will say though, that is pretty sick. I mean, granted the supports underneath kind of really make it a little bit more messy here and here. Well, this is not gonna be visible. Uh, this is gonna be inside the helmet. This could possibly be visible and this is really the only area that I wish it was a little cleaner, but I have to tell you this part, which people are gonna see, this, this is beautiful. I don't feel any need to touch the surface here. This is ready to go. What I think they did here was kind of put a bed of support, you see like that? And I'm thinking that if I could get this off, I'm wondering if this is gonna have a cleaner finish to it than what we saw in the other version. There we go. See, this is what I was talking about. So the question is, how much protection does it actually offer to the underside in doing this? You know, initially you look at it, you would say it definitely would look like it's a cleaner approach. I mean, it's stuck on just as well, but you know, in comparing it, I'm just showing you right off the bat, comparing it, you definitely have a cleaner finish in a lot of key areas. So for example, in the one that I did over here, you could see that under the tongue, it was a lot worse. And then over here with the 3MF vial, it's actually a lot better. So definitely when you do the other 3MF version of it, you'd get a nicer, cleaner finish in my opinion. So I would say definitely for the tongue, this looks to be the cleaner approach. All right, let's see how the eyes did. Oh yeah, look at that. Eyes came out really great. We're just gonna go ahead and gently remove these off. Look at that. Hey guys, so I printed out the Venom helmets, as I mentioned, with eSun PLA Plus Black, as well as the Sunlu Black, and here are the differences. And I don't know if you can see, I'm actually gonna see if I could turn this a little bit. There you go, that's a little bit better. And so if you notice, there's definitely more of a matte finish on the Sun Lu, and then there is much more of a sheen to it on the eSun. And I guess this is why, if you're looking to get more of that sheen, which is what we see in the movies, you can go for that effect. But of course, you know, Venom comes in all kinds of different shapes and styles, right? So you could really go with either, but there definitely is more of a sheen on the eSun PLA Plus, so keep that in mind. Okay, so when it comes time to putting on the eyes, you'll notice that they've notched out areas for your eyes, and again, I go with the ones that are mesh, not solid, because I wanna be able to see through them, and they really fit right into place, just like that. If you wanna see how that's gonna end up looking, yeah, just like that, beautiful, right? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this good stuff over here. I love using the uh, Mitri Appel. We're going to go ahead and put some into that groove there. And then we're going to just spray it on after that's done. I'm just putting it right on the inside all around. Not too much. You really don't need a lot for this. Once you've uh, put down that glue, go ahead and just put that down. And now comes the fun part of just spraying it. Make sure it's in position. You do have some curing, some work time while it's in position. And once it is and you feel you're happy with how it's positioned in there, um, now what I do is I just
Okay, that's it. That should kind of soak in there and it's gonna be good to go, nice and strong. And I'm just gonna now repeat the process on the other side. So now take a look. Yeah, that looks really nice. Okay, so when we're ready to put the teeth in, we have a top and a, a bottom. For the top, you can see that there are certainly notches here. And I think what we're gonna do, first we'll dry fit it, just make sure that everything goes. If it snaps in, then that's great, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna end up having to glue something here. So let's first kind of line up the notches accordingly um, and then see what's gonna be ne needed next. Okay, so that fits really nicely. But yes, we're definitely gonna wanna glue this in. It does hold, which is great. As you can see, it, that looks really amazing. But we're gonna definitely go ahead now and apply some of that CA glue with accelerator. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna bead this up a little bit, put some beads. I'm gonna reapply some of that spray after the fact. First, I'm just gonna to try to just hold it in place a little bit. Just needs a few seconds. All right, good. And then at that point, I'll just kind of spray a little bit so it soaks in behind. It'll drip into the jaw line, and then it will kind of make that hardening go by a little bit faster. But that should be it. I mean, that, that, that's gonna be in nice and tight now. All right, so now we gotta do the lower draw and then the tongue. Okay, so let's begin on putting the magnets into the helmet. We're gonna put magnets on the back side as well as the front side, and then these two are gonna come together. We're gonna end up using 10 by two millimeter magnets. Now, of course, this might change if you end up having to resize the helmet to something smaller, you may have to go with a smaller magnet. This, uh, I'm doing this one today using the regular full scale Yosh Studios file. I didn't decrease it or increase it in any way. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the uh, CA adhesive and we're gonna fill it into these holes, these little cavities that are routed out for the magnets. And then once we put it in there, we're gonna go ahead and hit it with some accelerant to hold it in place. Typically what I do is I make sure that all my magnets are in the same polarity. So I make sure that one side of the helmet will be all in north and the other side of the helmet all in south. People use all kinds of techniques. Sometimes people mark one side of the magnet with Sharpie so that they can better identify it. I usually try to be consistent. Consistent when I'm actually dispensing the magnets, I just go one after the other, after the other, after the other, and making sure that I'm doing it all in one fluid motion. Once this is all said and done, let it dry a little bit, and then you're all ready to put them together and see if they work. Okay, and now once that's done, we should be able to just put those two pieces together and voila, beautiful. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and work on the lower jaw. Um, just to give you an idea, the top draw over here is much wider than the lower draw, okay? Just so that you could see a basis of comparison between the two, not to get confused. Go ahead and dry fit that, just to see that everything matches up and fits into place, and it does. So that looks great. So, and I have to tell you, this actually stays in pretty well without even putting in any type of glue. So we're gonna just add a little bit of glue here. And it shouldn't go anywhere at this point. So now we're gonna go ahead and add the tongue. So here's the bottom over here, and you can see there is a component here that is going to fit right where the tongue is, like that and I'm actually going to glue this on. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna, again, add some of that CA glue. I'm actually gonna spray up the reverse side now, right here, just so that it can bond much quicker. So I'm gonna just spray it on, and that's it. That should just hold it there for a few seconds, 
and then that should be the end of it and then it's not going anywhere. If you do feel like you need to reinforce it, you may have to, but no, that's on pretty good. Yeah, that's on really, really good. Okay, so now that that's on, let's go ahead and take our top part. And as you can see over here, we have those, those um, holes that these hinges are gonna snap right into there and there. Now, this is actually, if you remember in the file, there were these two hinge plugs. This is where those hinge plugs would go, here and here. And that actually can add a little bit more support to holding things into place. I am gonna just forego that for now. And let's put the back panel back on. And wow. There you go, that's it. Hey, so I printed out these hinges and I'm gonna show you exactly how they get used. So as I had mentioned already, this, this jawline, it, it goes into this hinge and it is in pretty well. I, I really don't see this just popping out, but if you wanna secure it even further or just hide this up a little bit, you basically insert it like so, but you're gonna glue it, not just put it on top, it doesn't snap in or anything. And you're not going to glue all around the perimeter. You really only wanna glue the top part over here, okay? Right over there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take a little bit of CA glue and we're gonna drop it right into the middle of the hole. Oops, it's kinda, well, that's not the middle, but we'll get it in the middle. And then what we'll do now is spray our, okay, I sprayed the bottom of the hinge and I'm gonna just drop it right in. And that's it. Now that hinge is never coming out. <laughs> so as you can see, it still moves really freely, which is fantastic. So I'm gonna do that one more time on the other side. And that's it. It's in there now. It's not going anywhere. Now it cannot come off. So even if someone kind of pulls on it a little bit, that's not going anywhere. Okay, moment of truth. <laughs> Here we go. Let's see if, how this works. Okay. We are Venom. <laughs> so we're all done with our mask. It looks amazing. And like I said, this was a really, really fun build. I love the fact that Yosh Studios has these magnetic backings. It really makes it so easy to get the helmet on and off. I love the fact that there's like a hinge on here. That was brilliant. And the only thing I would ever say is if I had to modify this file, I might tinker around and maybe put magnets where the tongue is so that you could actually pull the tongue on and off via, uh, via those earth magnets. That would be the only modification. But other than that, it's, it's spectacular. I love it. So let's get down to the numbers, right? How long did this all take me? If I had only one printer, this would have taken two days and two hours, which isn't bad, but it would have been, you know, a couple of days to print all these different parts. If you have a couple of printers, it's gonna go by in no time. Now, in terms of dollars, if you don't have any of the colors for this project, you would have to buy five rolls of filament. And that's gonna run you somewhere between 17 and $22. However, with Black Friday coming up, check out those prices because you might be getting them for a lot less. But if you do have to buy them at full price, they're gonna end up coming somewhere around $92 to build this helmet. But understand that the amount of filament in total that this took up was only 1,088 grams. So it's literally just over one roll of filament. Basically, in terms of filament cost, this helmet would cost roughly around $17, which is not bad. And so if you do buy the five rolls, you could build a lot more of these. You could probably get another seven or eight out of there, maybe more. Anyway, 
I had a great time. I hope that you like this video. If you want me to do more of these kind of videos and more projects with step-by-step -step breakdowns, definitely let me know in the comments. It's something that I've been thinking about and doing more of these breakdowns. I know there's just so many of these TikTok videos and Instagram videos and YouTube shorts that literally fly through the video. Anyway, if you like more of this step-by-step -step process, let me know. I'll be happy to do more projects like this in this format. And just a reminder to everybody, we do have now memberships, so definitely feel free to support the channel and all of our good works that we do for the STEAM community. Thank you again for watching and happy printing.